मैडम भाई बैठना ग्रीन शर्ट Good evening. Well, art represents a diverse range of activities a creative mind performs. The beauty and talent these art forms and artists do is, is how they manage to appeal to our hearts and talk to our souls time and time again. Art is really said to be a collaboration between God and his chosen ones, but often, of course, it takes someone to give it that little nudge to take it to a wider audience who's always hungry for more and more. And that is where, ladies and gentlemen, Legends of India has played a stellar role over the last several years. India has always been known as the land that portrays culture and traditional vibrancy through its arts. And this is the message that Legends of India has worked so hard to underscore. Today, as part of that journey, we are here to mark a very significant evening in the organization's calendar. We are honoring Legends of India, true legends, their lifetime's work, bringing them under one roof and thanking them, thanking them from the bottom of our hearts on how they have enriched our lives and how they continue to do so every day. We are extremely delighted to have some of those who are institutions and will, of course, be awarded over the course of the evening here with us. Also honored to have uh, the Honorable Vice President, Sri Venkaya Naidu, grace this occasion and, and encourage us in our endeavors to bridge the gap between art and the common man. In fact, uh, uh, Sri Naidu has spoken about the urgent need to preserve India's classical art forms and all that we can lose if there are generations that are, in, in a sense, uh, several steps away from what India actually has to offer. And now before we proceed, if, if I can just please ask all of you to stand up for the national anthem. Jana Gana Mana Adhinayaka Jaya Hai Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttara Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Ujjana Jagadrita Ranga Tava Shubha Nabe Jage तब शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Any beginning uh, can always use some divine help, which is why we now have the time-honored tradition of lighting a lamp to mark an auspicious beginning. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, sirs. And before we move on, if I could just request Sri Dipan Mazumdar to prevent that Angavastra and plaque uh, to uh, the Honorable Vice President, Sri Venkaya Naidu, again, thanking him for gracing this occasion with his presence and being here today amid what is, uh, we all know, a, a very hectic and demanding schedule. Thank you, sir. Lalit Man Singh, Chairman, Legends of India, would just welcome uh, the Vice President now and, and all of you here this evening. Honorable Vice President, sir, it's indeed a privilege to welcome you as the Chief Guest of this evening's function. Over two decades ago, Sri Dipayan Mazumdar established the Legends of India as a non-profit organization to find a platform for younger artists and to help them with their performers. It was also a platform for conducting dialogues amongst experts on issues relating to culture. That the Legends of India has survived over the years and continues to flourish is entirely due to the passion and commitment of Sri Mazumdar and I request you to join me in sharing my appreciation of him. The flagship event of the organization is the annual Legends of India Lifetime Achievement Awards. Some of the most iconic figures in the cultural world of India have been the recipients of this prestigious award. I was privileged to serve this year as the chair of the jury for the Legends of India, a jury comprising of people of great eminence from different walks of life. Our job was superficially easy. After all, legends are not selected by a jury. They are already standing on pedestals created for them by society. And yet, selecting just three individuals of legendary stature from a crowded list of cultural luminaries proved to be quite challenging. Fortunately, the jury came up with a set of guidelines which made our task easier. To me, the most important directive was that the objective should be not just to find the persons who has reached the highest level of success in their respective fields, but in addition, to identify those amongst them who have left behind a legacy. In other words, our legends must have a record of inspiring, training, and teaching the succeeding generations of artists. This, in fact, has been the unique feature of India's history of art and culture. The artist was not regarded as a solo performer, but a leading player in aesthetic continuity. This is why uh, the legends of India, our legends of India, are not just kalakars, that is, artists and performers, but gurus and vidwans. Talking of gurus, one of the wisest men of India who was also the Mahaguru of diplomacy, statecraft, and public policy, Kautilya, had said in the 4th century BC, 
स्वदेशे पूज्यते राजा विद्वान सर्वत्र पूज्यते द रूलर इज वर्शिप्ड ओनली इन इज ओन कंट्री बट द विद्वान इज वर्शिप्ड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड बींग अ डिसाइपल ऑफ कौटिल्या आई एम टेम्पटेड टू एड अनादर लाइन टू दिस राजा पूज्यते काले तू विद्वान पूज्यते सर्वदा दैट मीन्स द राज द रूलर is worship while he is there in power but the vidwan is worship for all times to come it is sobering for many of us to remember that as we go in and out of office we are just little dots in history but these gems of our society like the navaratnas of king vikramaditya will remain immortal in our history The jury has unanimously selected three vidwans for this year's Legends of India Lifetime Achievement Award. Each of them represents the enormous diversity of the talent pool of India. They have studied different even foreign cultural traditions. They have been exposed to international influences and yet each one of them is quint essentially Indian. Ladies and gentlemen many of you may have already guessed the identity of the three legends being honored today but let me formally on behalf of the legends of india announce their names sri satish gujral <laughs> professor t n krishna <laughs> and Ratan Thiam Let me give you a brief snapshot of their lives and achievements Satish Gujral was born in Jhelum now in Pakistan He had a traumatic childhood after he was afflicted by an illness that left him permanently hearing impaired Growing up in Lahore he lived through the horrors of partition and eventually landed in india throughout this turmoil he pursued his passion for painting even traveling to mexico to work with some of the most famous artists like diego riviera and david alfaro siqueiros he reached the height of success in painting but his restless creativity led him to equal success in other areas like murals sculpture and even architecture Satish Gujral is one of the great artists of our times and we are proud that the Legends of India award this year has been conferred on him. Our next legend of India this year is Professor T N Krishnan. Unlike Gujral, T N Krishnan has led a more tranquil life. Unless the migration of South Indians to the north is counted as a traumatic experience. Born of musician parents, Krishnan was a child prodigy and attracted the attention of the great musicians, the great masters of Carnatic music like Semangudi Srinivasa Iyer, Semangudi Srinivasa Iyer and Arekodi Ramanuja Iyer. He rapidly made his way to the top as a Carnatic violinist and eventually found his way to Delhi where he served for many long years as professor and dean of the School of Music and Fine Arts of the Delhi University. We have come to believe that from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is one. And yet, Carnatic and Hindustani musicians often behave as if they live in different planets. T N Krishnan, to his credit, has built bridges of understanding between these two worlds of music. In fact, his family represents. the ultimate unity and harmony of indian music if he is the leading violinist in the carnatic style today his sister n rajam is the leading violinist in the hindustani style professor krishnan is a gentle giant a towering musician and a legend of india our youngest legend this year is sri ratan thiam He hails from Manipur in the northeastern extremity of India. Born in a family of dance and music, 
He drew his inspiration from the culturally rich traditions of Manipur, even as the state became the battleground for extremism. His chorus repertory theater, set in the lush green landscape of Imphal, became his ashram, from where he created masterpieces of theater like Uru Bhangam, Chakra Vyuha, Uttara Priyadarshi, Ritu Samharam, and Andha Yuga. As you can guess, his plays often draw from Indian mythology. They explore high philosophical issues, even as they are presented through the medium of folk traditions of dance and music. Ratam Thiam is a familiar figure in the international theater world. He brings the proud traditions of the Northeast to the mainstream of India and to the rest of the world. Look east and act east, and you'll find Ratam Thiam there. Honorable Vice President, sir, even before your time as an associate of the late Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee, you have projected the rich cultural heritage of India in the world abroad. You have joined the government in invoking the role of Vishwa Guru for India, which our country had enjoyed over the centuries in our history. You have encouraged the use of India's soft power as a powerful instrument of our foreign policy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is appropriate that three of the greatest artists of our time who have brought pride and distinction to <coughs> India are being honored today as legends of India and they will receive their honors, their awards with the blessings of the Honorable Vice President of India. Thank you very much. But India's crowded mix of cultural luminaries that really was a fascinating phrase and a great way to describe it. Clearly a tough task that the jury had, but you know that the stage is set and we just get on with the evening. And eating, of course, the first uh, what we give this evening is to Satish Gujral. Uh, the introduction has been made. Sir, a sculptor, muralist, a writer of the post-independent era, described by many as the most brilliant, multifaceted personalities that India has ever seen. Of course, surprises there, one of the greatest as well as most versatile artists of India. You've just got a snapshot of his, his work, his life, his immense contribution from Ashri Khan Singh, uh, really driven uh, by an innate urge that doesn't let him stop. OK, OK, great, great. And uh, we will just, if the Vice President has very kindly agreed to, in fact, uh, up, uh, to Ashri Khan and honor him uh, there. So we can just uh, have Sri Mek and I to do the honors. Uh, In 2000, the, the Belgian embassy in Delhi, if, if you just do a quick Google of Satish Kujral's work, that's one of the things that's going to, wow. that's going to come up, a 20th century architectural landmark that stands as a sign of his conviction, enterprise, and versatility. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And Sri Gujral is, of course, a, a, a living legend. There's just no doubt about that. One of the few who have consistently dominated the art scene in India for really the entire post-independence era. 
You've also been introduced to our next legend of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, T.N. Krishnan, a seven generation artist. He is the perfectionist who's really raising the benchmark of Krishnan, striving for excellence uh, every day, even today. He's been a child prodigy, making his debut concert at a very young age, I think it was eight or 10, and we're delighted to have the violin maestro amidst us today. He's been raising the benchmark for Carnatic music with his gifted fingers, the string and the bow. And yet, yet, and what I found fascinating was he still calls himself a student of music and it's his humility that really stands out uh, among uh, you know, the, uh, the art scene, the cultural landscape that India has. Right, thank you, sir. You really are a true inspiration. Our next awardee takes us, of course, to the world of theatre, Sri Ratan Khyam, crafting really a new idiom in modern Indian theatre. If I could just request him up on stage, really the pride of India, known for delivering just so many mesmerizing performances enriched in contemporary humanitarian values, stunning visual aesthetics, controlled brilliance of performance, and uh, incisive messaging really now being his trademark. Thank you, all of you, who brought this tremendous joy and inspired so many of us. And if now I can just call upon the Honorable Sri Venkaya Naidu uh, to share his thoughts and insight into the arts and the role of evenings like this one. Sri Dharit Mansingi, Sri Depyan Majundar, Arvitrom. सचमुच में आज मैं बहुत प्रसन्न हूँ मन में। I feel really happy, proud that I could meet these three great men of India and then present them the awards. I am very happy to be admitted. Some of the leading lights of Indian music, theatre, and visual arts. The legendary artists who are honoring today, theatre personality Sri Ratan Kion, renowned violinist Sri T N Krishnanji, and painter and sculptor Sri Satish Gujarat, have carved out a niche for themselves in their respective art forms and brought global recognition to India. They have excelled in their respective fields and have become the shining stars in the ferment of Indian culture. 
very few countries in the world can match India's diversity in culture and various art forms. There have been a large number of creative artists over the last two millennia who have greatly enriched India's cultural capital. To that instance, the lineage belongs to these three iconic personages we are honoring today. In the present era of fast paced lifestyles and hectic schedules, the best way to regenerate one's mind and soul is through attending a concert, a play, an exhibition, or any artistic performance. Irrespective of whether a person is a commoner, good music, dance, or a play ever elevates our lives to a different level. We are all living in a different age now. We are living in LPG, liberalization, privatization, and globalization. Life has become very fast. People are restive sometimes for no reason. Maybe because they don't have work. And work means they have work, but they don't do the work and they become restive also in mind. And added to this, lifestyles have changed. Literally, there is no physical activity now. And we are not able to live with the nature. The nature also is now see how it's reacting. It is age old saying that we must love and live with the nature. Then life will be more perfect. But today, because of change of lifestyles, we have tension and you are losing attention. This is happening in every sector. So, if there is a tension, there cannot be attention. And if there is no attention, there cannot be any progress. Peace, mental, physical, environmental peace is a prerequisite for progress. In spite of all these tensions, there is one sector which can really bring succor, is what we call svantana, is uh, music, art, culture. The culture plays an important role in improving the quality of our lives. What is life? Life is not simply eating, eating, eating are moving around, are enjoying some wealth at all. Life is of all these things. Particular. That's why you go through the history of Rajas, Maharajas, Kings, even others. They all used to encourage different forms of arts. Each Maharaja in each regime, such encouragement used to be there. Because that is a duty, because if you want to make the society happy, the happiness comes from different facets of life, including these arts. That's why you have seen in the recent past, when the Prime Minister proposed this yoga in the United Nations, more than 172 countries are now, are all really encouraging and practicing yoga. I was in Peru two months back in Latin American countries. To my surprise, I found it en uh, route six, seven places, yoga centers. So that's the impact of yoga. The culture has a direct impact on every facet of our life from education to tourism. The Sanskrit word for culture in Sanskriti, signifying a special creation and a transformative experience. Transformative experience. Refinement, sublimation, and the ability to see extraordinariness in ordinariness is at the root of all art forms. We need to preserve this ability that brings a creative and artistic touch to our lives through music, dance, theater, poetry, sculpture, and other arts. We must integrate art into our education system effectively and seamlessly. Unless our great art forms are recognized and made popular, encouraged, particularly among the younger generation, they will become relics of the past and remain as a mere show pieces. The younger generation should be made aware of the importance of creative art forms and must be made sensitive to what is aesthetically good. 
It goes without saying that various art forms like music, theater, visual arts transcend all barriers of language, religion, geographies, and hierarchies. They speak and convey the message in the universal language that is understood by one and all. Art unites hearts. hearts. Art makes us more humane. Art is the articulation of a civilizational value system. While the government at the center and in various states have been promoting culture and different art forms, I urge the private sector to contribute its might in propagating India's culture, heritage and various art forms. I was told that Pandit Bruno Maharaj, Johra Sahagal, Habib Tanvir, Sitara Devi, Giriya Devi, Paritosh Sen, Yamini Krishnamurti, to mention a few, were among the recipients of Legends of India Lifetime Achievement Awards. These Lifetime Achievements Awards are token appreciation for artists who have dedicated their lives in pursuit of fine arts, enthralled listeners and enraptured viewers and en enchanted art lovers. It should be remembered that an award presentation or a felicitation to a person is meant to inspire. This award is not a great reward to the contribution they have made throughout their life. But the significance of this award ceremonies and the reason for my acceptance also is this presentation or this award is to inspire others. This is part of Bharatiya culture. Recognizing the merit, honoring the merit is part of Indian culture. This is what our forefathers used to practice right from the day one. So the very purpose of today's this get together is to showcase these great men and encourage the new generation to inspire them. Felicitation is to give inspiration. That is the purpose of today's program. We should at the same time focus on nurturing talent and providing enough opportunities for our youth to learn music, dance, sculpture, painting and other fine arts. I can say proudly, in India, this land, this water, this air, this environment has something special. Every human being who is born in this great country has some talent or other. Either a fisherman, a weaver, a goldsmith, or a blacksmith, or a sculptor, or a carpenter, or a plumber, or a dobi even. They have something special because of our civilization. Our old civilization, because thousands of years of civilization, the Adikal, the Vedakal, the Purnakal, the Puranakal, the Purojan, the Jiya, or Diya, Virasatnam ko Mila, Usko Kayam Rakana Chai. We should continue that tradition. And ours is one of the ancient traditions and ancient culture. India was once upon a time as known as Vishwa Guru. Students from Naranda and Takshasila, Din and Takshasila, used to come from abroad and then used to read here. Pahian, Yuan Song, the Chinese historians, they also wrote about the greatness of India. In spite of all this, India never attacked any country. All time Dick and Harry came and attacked us, ruled us, ruined us, cheated us, looted us also. I have no hesitation in saying it also. But India, in spite of being called as Vishwa Guru, in spite of having at least 27% of the world GDP at that time, before uh, the independence and invasions, never thought of attacking anybody. Because our culture, our civilization is Vasudaika Kutumbam, Kutumbakam. Sarve jana sukhino bhavantu. Share and care is the core of our philosophy. This is what our forefathers have practiced and told us. We must preserve it. And one best way of cultural communication is art, the music. Music is such a powerful instrument. It can melt anybody. It's called Pashana, Hrudaya. Unko bhi melt kar shakti. Utana power hai music. And music also can convert people. And change their mindset. That is the power of the music. And also art. 
It conveys the meaning without speaking. It will have effect on the mind of the person. And yet, a place, they also convey a powerful message. These are the mediums of communication. Now, I can tell you, information with confirmation is more than nomination. Information with confirmation. See, music. Just now, Krishna Ji was telling me, I am making some noise. It's not nice, sir. Nice is nowadays seen in cinemas. Nice have replaced voice. Earlier there used to be voice. And if you see the old films also, people who are familiar with films, the hero never used to touch heroine. But still there used to be Sangara. Now more than it, whether you touch, you do anything else, and do all the Angara, there is no Sangara. Because the communication, the ability of communication through music, through art, through dialogues, through other painting, that's getting slowly, getting what we call uh, mm, diluted or polluted. So there is need to preserve the originality and that we can seek from great people. This evening, we are all here to join the need to nurture culture, refine it and propagate it, and art should pervade national consciousness. On the auspicious occasion of Lifetime Achievement Award Ceremony 2018, it is a matter of pride that Dr. Sri Deepayan Madundar, as an individual, has done human service in not only promoting our cultural heritage, but also helped and encouraged many young talents to find a true meaning in pursuing music, art, and theatre. You want to organize, you need a person who has got a passion. I understand that the Legends of India is also working on a unique project for the skill development of trained musicians. The society needs to encourage such efforts. There are many corporate organizations who have been working towards the promotion of art, culture, but Sri Deepayan Madundar is a rare example of an individual who have been rendering such a meritorious service for almost two decades. I once again convey my hearty congratulations to the awardees, Sri Ratan Tiyanji, the Diana of the Theatre of Roots Movement, Roots, Roots. We should never forget our roots. That's why wherever I go, I have been advocating that everyone should remember five things. One, mother, the great mother who has given you the beautiful birth, should never, never forget your mother. And I say mother, automatically father also is there. I am not trying to create a distinction. See, woman, huh? woman. W-O, M-E-N, man also is there in woman. Uh, you, that's a tradition of this country also. Second is the native place, the place where you were born. You should always feel proud and remember that. Back home, you must do something to your native place. Third one is mother tongue, the language that has come from mother's womb. You should speak in mother's tongue in your own place. It has become a fashion for us with the advent of colonial mindset that we ignore our language and we speak in other language. I am not against other languages. Uh, you must learn as many languages as possible. But do not forget and neglect mother tongue. Mother tongue like is your eyesight. Other language is like chashma. <laughs> if you have eyesight, then this sight. Chashma will be useful. If you don't have sight, then you lose foresight also, not all this. So you must practice mother tongue. Mother tongue, even at home, I see to my dismay. The elderly people who are not educated, they tell their children, Babu, Mummy kaho, Daddy kaho. What is this Mummy, Daddy culture? And you can say beautifully, Amma, Ma, Ammi, even in Urdu. It comes from your heart. But slowly, as I told you, because of the colonial mindset, we have changed all this thing. And fourthly, the motherland, the beautiful country which has given you this beautiful life, 
you should never forget the country. Country do not mean boundaries. Country means 130 crore people. This nature, this every creature in the country, everything should be respected, protected, and you should not discriminate people on the basis of religion or region or caste or other this thing. And then fifth is Guru. Guru should always be remembered. You may have so much technological advancement. Now you have IT. Okay, no problem. IT is good. But you also have Google now. You ask the children about anything, they don't apply their mind. They immediately go to Google. And then what is there in the Google? But I can tell you, Google is important. But Google can never replace Guru. Guru is sacrosanct. You must respect Guru and you must get the talent from the Gurus. These are all very, five things what I told are very essential for everybody. The language, the culture, they go together. Bhasha or Bhavana, ek saath chal hai. I am not discriminating between the languages. But in India, there are more than 760 languages. Hats off to all of them. But at the same time, Alag bhasha, alag vesh, phir bhi apna ek desh. Vividhata mein ekata, Bharat ka visheshata. Tirubu, Tamil, Kannada, Malayali, Marathi, Punjabi, Assami, Bhojpuri, or Kashmiri, Dogri, any language. Every language has some beauty in that. Every language has some beauty. And the beauty of music is, the music speaks all languages together. That's the beauty. Even if you go to Tamil Nadu, Tyagaraja Kirtana, they are all written in Telugu originally. Still, people enjoy it because that's the power of the music. The Karnataka music. Karnataka music, practiced in Tamil Nadu, written in Telugu. It's <laughs> unity. Unity. See the beautiful unity in that also. So, we should protect our culture, our heritage, our languages. And then try to try, try to pass on it to the new generations. And universal brotherhood. The entire universe is one. We are all creatures of God. Who is God? We have not seen. You have not seen, I have seen, not seen. I find him in Rama, you find him in Allah, he find him in Jesus, whoever it is. But at the end of it, there is some buddy who is above us. So if you believe in that and you follow dharma, you follow the, the path of natural justice, and then you adhere to those values, then life will be more comfortable. In the modern age, while you are having all these problems, as I told you, the only solution is the spirituality, coupled with the other art forms of India, which can really bring succor, peace, and happiness to the people. So I salute these three great men of our times who have really done a great service to the country, to the cause of the music, Sri Ratan Tiyamji, and then Padma Bhushan Sri Tiyan Krishnanji, and Padma Bhushan Sri Satish Gujarji, with these people with many faces. As the ancient Indian sages have said, Saraswati, Shruti Mahati, Mahiyatam. Let the glory of Goddess Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning and Fine Arts, spread far and wide. Let great exponents of art continue to spread the message of harmony, beauty and peace. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. I think there's no better way to share wisdom with people than take the, the, uh, the use of wit, the, the witty route, because the message really goes down well, as, as I think it, it has there. Thank you very much, sir, and again, for underscoring the role of culture in our lives and just how we are impacted by it in so many ways that we don't even realize it anymore. Well, we're moving on with the evening. Time now for a vote of thanks. If Shafiq uh, Pan Maddar, our chairman Legends of India, and the man working tirelessly for the cause of Indian art, could just please address the evening.
before I say something, I think Mr. Gujral wants to uh, say something or give a check of charity to. gesture of yours to donate this uh, to the state that is just ravaged by floods and donate it to the f fund for the rehabilitation of the state of Kerala is, is exemplary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Every contribution counts. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gujral, for donating in for the Kerala Relief Fund. Thank you on behalf of all of us. Adhaniya Uprashpati ji, Sri Lalit Man Singh ji, Sri Satish Gujral, Sri T. N. Krishnan, Sri Ratan Thayam, our patrons, Honorable members of the Selection Committee for Legends of India Lifetime Achievement Award, and dear friends who are gracing this occasion. In fact, I'm so overwhelmed by the proceedings this evening that I'm really at a loss of words to express my gratitude to all of you. We are extremely honored, and I especially thank Uprashpati Ji for being among us this evening. Legends of India is a unique institution that brings together the living legends and those in the making. And in order to do so, we have taken various initiatives, something like the Morning Ragas, where we identified young talents from different parts of India and provided them the opportunity to showcase their skills. We plan to introduce Baitaks very soon, where we shall not only introduce new talents, but provide them platform to share with the senior artists. Sir, as you rightly said, Legends of India strongly believes that unless our traditional art forms are recognized and incorporated within the education syllabi, they will shrink and become mere showpieces. Our, our, our endeavor has been to identify young talents, train them, and promote them to become legends to be. I take this opportunity to thank Sri Satish Gujral, Sri T. N. Krishnan, and Sri Ratan Tayam for consenting to accept the Legends of India Lifetime Achievement Award this year. 
as I have always maintained that by honoring such legends, we actually honor ourselves because we sincerely believe that artists give grace and meaning to life. We are also grateful to the members of the selection committee, chaired by Mr. Lalit Man Singh. Thank you, Mr. Man Singh. Thank you, Mr. Bharat Gupta, Srimadhi Manjari Sinha, Ambassador GSIA, Ambassador Gare Khan, Ambassador Suresh Goel, and Rupi Mahendra. Let me once again express my very special gratitude to Mr. Larith Man Singh and Mr. Suresh Goel, who have always stood by us since inception and been giving and been a guiding force of the legends of India. Let me also extend my sincere thanks to Mr. KMS Mani and Mr. Manjur Unikrishnan, the accompanying artists with Mr. T. N. Krishnan this evening, who have come all the way from Chennai for a recital on this special occasion. Thank you, Mr. Krishnan, for accepting our request for performing this evening. On this occasion, I would also express my very special thanks to my friends who have stood by me and stood by India in difficult times. I can immediately recall a few names like Prabal Koshal, Joy Jyoti Nandi, Mr. Tanmoy Chakravarti, Mr. Ranjan Mukherjee, Mr. Satish Agarwal, Mr. Asim Chaudhary, Dr. Madhukar Gupta, Sri Udit Jain, Sri Ashish Thakur Kokar, Dr. Bharat Gupta, and Sri Sudhakar Gandhi, who has specially come on this occasion from Bangalore. Thank you, Mr. Gandhi. Finally, I would like to thank all our sponsors who have come forward and associated with us. Without them, this wouldn't have been policy, possible to hold this function. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for being our strength. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It really is true when we honor them, we actually do honor ourselves, really, for the evening. But the evening isn't over yet. In fact, uh, uh, we've tried to save the best for the last. Uh, a treat is in store, a recital by uh, Krishnan, whose humility, of course, uh, like I did touch upon earlier as well, really has been a lesson uh, to all. He thanks God's grace and, and practice for his success, saying that he's still practicing intently before every uh, performance, insisting it's the only way to put your best foot forward. So we have that performance this evening now lined up uh, uh, for you as and delighted to also note that uh, uh, the Honorable Vice President also staying back, uh, making some time in his schedule, and staying back a few extra minutes also to join us for this treat.
this
blessing from God. the last couple of minutes uh, evening left with a quick announcement first that Legends of India has decided to match the contribution that was made earlier this evening to the fund for the rehabilitation of Kerala. So thank you, uh, you and I'm sure that each one of you is individually also doing a fair amount uh, uh, to help the state that it just ravaged in this fashion. Well, this evening would not have been possible without the support, without the encouragement and guidance of some distinguished members who play such a significant role in the journey. That in the main day, I will be delighted uh, to honor them. And we'll uh, start, of course, with uh, Sri Lalit Man Singh, former Foreign Secretary, acknowledging his invaluable contribution as Chairman of Legends of India and your Lifetime Achievement Awards, and being the one big reason that we get to see evenings like this and get to honor and meet and, and hear and see in person the kind of performances that we are. Thank you so much, sir. If you could just come up on stage, sir. Gratitude this evening also to Sri uh, Suresh Goyal, who we'd like to honor for his support and guidance as curator Legends of India Art Appreciation Series. Cannot thank you enough for all that you have done, sir.
right? And dinners, of course, are baking, but before that, quick word with all the winners of our all this evening. And I'll come down to have a quick chat with the, with the book. You, of course, uh, Street Book Gujarat has left, but. Oh, okay. Well, I'm told that I can call you up. I don't, I mean, would you be okay? Ratniam, sir, would you be okay to come up and just have a few words? And said that this is the 82nd year that you are performing. That really is, is incredible. I want to ask you, what keeps you going? How do you do this and only get better at it for so many, many years? I should have told that in the beginning. That <laughs> now it's an examination for me again. <laughs> anyway, it is uh, just uh, Guru Bhakti, devotion, practice, and the inspiration, appreciation from the audience like you. All over the world. That makes us do this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What would you say is, is the one most rewarding thing about what you do, and what is the most challenging? Well, uh, the most challenging thing in my work and art is supposed to be what I think and I feel is to not to accept myself. Always think about the criticism that I do to myself because I work for myself. I don't work for anybody in this world. I only work for myself. It is like, it is like Shalbari's pain, you know, in Ramayan, that I work, I get, I try. And after the satisfaction coming to me, when I say to myself, well, this is what I could have, I have done, now I'm a little bit satisfied. And that's how the taste and you know, I want to share the sweetness, not the sour one, to the audience. Then, you know, my work goes to them. Otherwise, I cannot share with them. And that is a very big challenge for me. When and why and what I should select in my work, mm -hmm. and that too in the world of theater, and that too in India, where theater economics never worked mm -hmm. in the last 75 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd start to wrap, but uh, Sri Krishna, I would like to ask you, you know, so much is said about India's young generation, and there's so much, you know, about where they're going, how they're doing, uh, have they learned the best practices from people like both of you? What would you say? Is it promising? Do you hope that, I mean, are you, are you, are you confident of, of sort of handing the mantle to a generation that is up to it? Well, yes, both see, of you. Uh, we have two things now. We have a very different cultural landscape. <laughs> Which, is, which was not here even 30, 40 years back. And this new cultural landscape is in a very, very difficult stage because the tradition that we inherited in the last thousands of years and the kind of technology that human being developed in the last 50 years you know, this is, these are the two things that we are struggling. We, we, we would like to know because one is comfort-based, unlimited desire-based. One is with high-tech power. One is really associated with many, many new things, innovative ideas, many, many things. One is just like 
a flow of water which is coming down as a tradition from a waterfall which is thousands and thousands years old and knocking to the huge stones of socio-political, economical, and religious factors that we have in this contemporary world, including the technology that we have. And this is becoming a big challenge for me. And that's why the younger generation has to be, you know, very aware. I mean, they should try and uh, try out both things, not leaving one. You know, because we cannot live without our tradition. Because that is what in this globalization that we want. We want our identity to be intact. At the same time, we would like to travel, travel to the new age. That is what I think is a big challenge for the younger generation, which is coming up. So it's not unique to us. Well, that is it that is, is good to know, right? It Just, is very difficult to understand. Well, and also digest. It is very difficult to digest mm -hmm. when you know that uh, there is an isolation coming up, mm -hmm. and we can, we are bringing up more and more and more, you know, all these wounds, mm -hmm. which was not here 40, 50 years back. Mm -hmm. Increasing number of all these wounds increasing number of orphans, increasing number of malnutrition, you know, so all these things are to be looked after by many other factors, not only politics, but also the society that we are growing up and we belong. That's very important for us, I think. It is, of course, in this context that the arts play a great role. One last question to both of you. What does uh, an honor of the kind that has been bestowed this evening mean to both? It's, How significant is it? It's very significant. It's very important for a person like me because it's very encouraging. In a phase, in these days of my life, I, I don't know what I have achieved. I don't know what I have done. Because it is very difficult to calm down about what it is about. But you need a source of inspiration, a source of encouragement all the time. In art, if you are not encouraged, it is not only the financial resources that you need, but also some kind of recognition, some kind of encouragement. Recognition means encouragement. Encouragement means Recognition. So this is one of the recognition that I am getting. And from tomorrow onwards, I will be lifting myself. I will be an inch taller, I will think. Terrific. And then, you know, proceed to the future. And that is what it becomes. That is why it becomes very important for me. Absolutely. I think after this evening, there should be no doubt in what we believe your achievement is. is really uh, on all of that and, and I think mission accomplished after everything that you said. Last words to you. Last words. Let me rephrase. I take that back. Last words for this evening. I will come again. Yes, of course. Yes.
because of that. But I have done so many things all these years. And now I am trying to learn from the youngsters who are contributing now. There are many youngsters. But as you said, uh, is it uh, well to accept or not that is left to one's own decision? And there will be better scope for everybody and better opportunities, awards, talent, everything. And especially people like you who are doing this, we must, uh, we must, we must salute. Yes, we must salute. Right, and like you said yourself, that to more evenings, more achievements, more awards, time, and, and lots more to come. Thank you both very much. Thank you very much. Well, it's a wrap for the evening. Thank you so much. You've been a splendid audience, and you can just join us for dinner, please. Thank you.